What's up, guys? Fantasy Joe back here with another Mock Draft Monday. And since you guys gronk smashed that like button and hit over 20 views on the last Mock Draft, as I said in the last video, we are going to be bringing you two uploads this Monday. This will be the first one, and then I'll be uploading another video, another Mock Draft, a little bit later this afternoon. If you're new to the channel, please like this video, subscribe down below, and leave a comment down below, and I will respond to you in the comments as always. Without further ado, let's get into this Mock Draft Monday. Today we're doing a Mock Draft from the 1.10 spot, drafting from that 10 spot. Um, we're doing full point PPR, and we're doing a three wide receiver league. And yeah, let's just jump right on into it and see what we get going. So yeah, I really appreciate all of you guys supporting the last video. We hit over 20 views, I think, in the first 24 hours, so that was awesome. Um, and here, okay, so it's a full point PPR league, as we mentioned, three receivers. And right at the bat, we've got Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler available for our running backs, Tyree Kill, Stephon Diggs. Let's go over the guys who were drafted. So it started off with Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Devontae Adams, Derek Henry, Aaron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott, and DeAndre Hopkins. <clears throat> now, I think mm, both these receivers are really enticing. I like a lot of these running backs. Um, gosh, it's really tough in a full-point PPR to decide between Jonathan Taylor and Austin Eckler for me, too. Those guys are neck and neck. Um I think this is going to come as a bit of a surprise. I think I'm actually going to take Jonathan Taylor here just for the fact that um, a lot of these other players, uh, I think that I can wait for them to potentially get back to me. Um, I think either Tyree Kill, Austin Eckler, or Stefan Diggs will hopefully make it back to my next pick. So we're going to take Jonathan Taylor here, and we're going to see which one of them makes it back um, in that next pick. Some technical malfunctions. Uh, okay, we're back. Okay, and no, so, okay, so I took Jonathan Taylor, then Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler, Tyreek Hill, and Miles Sanders were selected. Um, and Stefan Diggs is still available. Stefan Diggs and Tyreek Hill in a PPR, I think I'd honestly prefer Diggs. I would take Tyreek Hill in other formats, but Diggs is just such a high volume receiver, and that's not exactly Tyreek Hill's game. So in full point PPR, I was leading Diggs a little bit already, and I thought there was a good chance he could make it back. That's why we went Jonathan Taylor. I was considering Austin Eckler in that first round just because he gets such a high volume. I was on pace to catch 94 passes last year. Caught 92 passes, I believe, the year before that. Dynamic out of the backfield. Jonathan Taylor doesn't get that same volume in the passing game, but I expect him to be 250-plus carry back and probably catch 30 to 40 passes at least. So um, I'm going to take Stefan Diggs here, though. Get me a stud wide receiver one, stud running back one. Um, I feel really good about the team and where we're at. Um, and we'll see who is available. Ooh, Julio Jones in a PPR. Um, yeah, this is pretty much an auto pick for me here. Josh Jacobs, eh, I think Ken, the Kenyon Drake signing hurts him a ton. I do like James Robinson, um, but Julio's too good to pass up here. I'm going to take Julio, especially in the three wide receiver league, stack Stefan Diggs and Julio as my top two receivers. Julio's on pace for over 100 receptions last year if you take out his two injured games. Um, I expect him to be dominant again in fantasy. I think people are sliding way too far down on Julio. I think he gets a bump in full point PPR as well because of the volume that he gets. So I'm going to take him here. Hopefully, you know, James Robbins can make it back to me. Probably not, though. He's a very good player, but we'll take Julio Jones here and we will not look back. And James Robinson did make it to us. So that's why you play that game. We were able to win it here. And I absolutely love the way our team has started out already. Getting Julio Jones and James Robinson in this third and fourth round. Um, the only other running back I would consider two other bad big backs that I think are still on this list that I would be looking at. Besides James Robinson, who we're going to take. Chris Carson, I think he's going to be an absolute stud this year in Seattle again. He gets a passing volume. He gets a running game volume. Um, honestly, him and James Robinson are pretty close. I might even take Chris Carson. Melvin Gordon, I think, too, is a big winner for the agency. The fact that Philip Lindsay um, was able to get out of Denver and then sign elsewhere was absolutely huge for Melvin Gordon. 
They might bring another back in a free agency, but he's probably going to be the only back there. They're getting some help back on their offensive line in the form of some guys opted out last year. They're coming back. They have a great offensive line coach there in Denver, maybe the best in the league. Um, so that is a huge uh, bonus for having the running back on that team. He's going to be able to get their offensive line moving in the right direction. But I think I'm honestly going to take Chris Carson here. I think he was one of the big winners of free agency. The fact that he was able to go back to Seattle, get some money in his pocket too. Um, I love James Robinson. Thought he was going to be the pick here, but I think Chris Carson, the fourth round, is too good of a value because he gets, you know, he gets, he's one of those guys who gets 270, 80 carries if he's healthy and is heavily utilized in the passing game. So is James Robinson, but the Seattle offense is a tiebreaker there. And I think I like the Seattle offense a lot more than I like the Jacksonville Jaguars offense, even with Trevor Lawrence coming in this year as quarterback. I think it'll be a big boost for their offense, but. I don't think it will be, you know, I don't think they're going to go to a top 10 offense or top 5 offense in one year. And James Robinson was an undrafted rookie. Chris Carson just got paid some money. I like that the team is a little bit more invested in Chris Carson as well. So you look at what the team has invested in him and Chris Carson compared to James Robinson and the offense for both of those reasons. I'll take Chris Carson in the fourth round and lock him down. Okay. So let's take a look. We still have Tyler Lockett available at receiver, DJ Chark, Will Fuller, Cortland Sutton, Debo Samuel, Robbie Anderson, Chase Claypool, Brandon Cooks. Um, Melvin Gordon still available. I really do like Melvin Gordon. Um, we don't have a flex league, a flex spot in this league because it's a three wide receiver league. <clears throat> but Melvin Gordon honestly might be too good to pass up. There's just so many good backs. I would love to take, you know, Tyler Lockett and lock him down, but at the same time, I don't mind taking Cortland Sutton or Debo Samuel um, with my next pick to fill that third wide receiver spot. Let's take a look at some of the tight ends that are still available. Noah Fant, Dallas Goddard, um, not really interested in either of those guys. Let's take a look at when some of these tight ends were selected. Mark Andrews is taken right there. That's a good pick. Um... TJ Hawkins in the fifth. I do understand the logic there, I guess. I think I would have waited probably until the sixth or seventh, though. Um, I think the logic, though, is that basically TJ Hawkinson is the only receiver left in Detroit. He's probably going to get a, a, a ton of targets next year. But still, I don't know if I would take him that high. Um, I'm going to take Melvin Gordon here, build my running back depth. Even though he's not a starter right away, running backs go down all the time. I can trade him. I can do a lot with him. Um, and I feel really good about if you have only have two running back spots and I have Jonathan Taylor, Chris Carson, Melvin Gordon, I feel good about being able to fill those spots every week. And I think Melvin Gordon is going to get a great volume in the passing game this year. There's a reason they brought him in originally, even with Philip Lindsay, and it's because Lindsay was not much of a pass catcher. I expect Melvin Gordon to be utilized even more heavily in this role now that Philip Lindsay is gone and even more on the ground as well. I think he could be dynamite for fantasy football if they don't invest a top pick in a running back. And honestly, there aren't a whole lot of stud running backs in this year's draft class, in my opinion. There's four or five guys I think that could come in right away and, you know, steal carries from Melvin Gordon. But after that, I think it's, you know, Melvin Gordon's going to be getting a lion's share of the work, really, no matter what, if they don't draft one of those top guys. And Tyler Lockett is still available. I'm going to take Tyler Lockett. He was a wide receiver one last year. Sure, he doesn't have the consistency that you would like from that position. But... I already have Stefan Diggs, Julio Jones. Like, I'm going to take him here. I'm going to be happy about it. I feel like I've got three. You know, Tyler Lockett, I wouldn't rank as a wide receiver one this year. But I feel like I've got two wide receiver ones and maybe a top 20 receiver. And Tyler Lockett is my third. So I really like that to start the team off. Jarvis is another guy. Full people in full PPR league gets a bump. He'd get a bigger bump if they were to move on from Odell Beckham Jr. But I don't expect them to do that at this time. Could happen. It's a situation to monitor as the offseason progresses. As far as quarterbacks go, a lot of these guys, you know, I'm just going to keep punting the road, punting the ball down the road. I do think I like Joe Burrow a lot more going into next season than I did um, a little bit ago just because of the way the draft order is shaking up. With the Dolphins trading back from three, originally I thought there was a really good chance they were going to take the left tackle from Oregon, Sewell. Um, or, I'm might be butchering his name, but um, now I think there's a much better chance that that guy get that that tackle gets to Cincinnati's pick at five, and if he gets there, it'll be a huge boost for 
Joe Burrow is getting a stud left tackle in Panay Sewell. Um, he actually, his last year at Oregon, received a vote for the Heisman. So that's just how good he was at tackle. Um, and that was the year that Joe Burrow won the Heisman, that dominant performance, just to put in perspective how good he was as a sophomore at Oregon. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm going to take Jarvis Landry here, build my wide receiver depth, and get a good guy for a PPR league. Um, all righty, next up, I'm going to snag. Let's see, we're in the eighth round now. take a look at some of these tight ends yeah i'm gonna snag dallas goddard here i think dallas goddard could be really good next season he's really the only i expect them to move on from zach Ertz, and then he's gonna be playing you know the role by himself i think he could absolutely dominate in that role i think he's a talented player we're gonna take him here lock him into our tight end spot um i think dallas goddard is a better football player than zach Ertz is at this point because of what he can do in the run game and he's a good athlete as well has good ball skills um when he's more utilizing that offense, I think he is a guy who has a chance to shine and potentially, you know, be a top five tight end, maybe. Alrighty, let's take a look at who is available. So this is why we took uh, Melvin Gordon there, just because I can't be relying on a Damian Harris, a Zach Moss, a Naeem Hines, an A.J. Dillon, any of these guys week to week to do much for my team. If I did need to fill in a spot for one of my starting running backs. So that is why we took that high bench pick on Melvin Gordon there. Which is the replaceability of the position. Um, Another PPR guy. I think I'm going to take Jamison Crowder here. He's not a guy I, take, I would usually take if it wasn't a PPR league. And I think they're going to take Zach Wilson. Um, I think he has a chance to have a pretty good rookie year. Especially if they could find you know some more offensive line help to help him out. And there's just not a whole lot of pass catchers in New York. Um, I know they signed Corey Davis, but Jameson Crowder is more of that PPR guy. So we're going to take him here and build that wide receiver depth some more. Um, not something I do in a ton of leagues is build a ton of wide receiver depth. But when you have to start three of them every single week, you know, injuries happen to these guys. You've got to be ready to stick guys in. And in a PPR league, you need to get a lot of points from those wide receiver spots. Alrighty, we have... Tom Brady is still available. Um, gosh, I really like my, Matthew Stafford as well, so I think I'm just going to keep kicking the can down the road at the quarterback position. At this point, though, I think I'm going to take Mike Williams here. He's a guy who I just think is super talented. And then when you combine him with a stud quarterback like Justin Herbert or Air Bear, uh, I think him getting a full off season is going to be monumental. Or not the full off season, but just... Being a talented receiver with a talented quarterback, I think he has a much higher ceiling than he has before. I'm going to take him here, snag another receiver, and then I'm hoping I can snag. We'll see if he can make it back to me. A.J. Dillon went. I'm not too mad, upset about that. Um, probably would have taken him in hindsight. Would have tried to snag A.J. Dillon. Um, just because he's a guy I think could give me you know a few big-time spot starts if Aaron Jones misses a week or two. The Green Bay Packers are relatively um, conservative as a staff when it comes to players playing through injuries. But uh, let's take a look at these guys that are still available. Um, so, yeah, my QB spot, I'm going to still keep punting it down the road. I love Matthew Stafford, and he's still available. Carson Wentz in Indianapolis is still available, too. He's a guy I think definitely buy low, just – him all the way at 18, I think it's too low, especially when he uses his legs. He's behind a good offensive line. The last time we saw him be a successful quarterback was behind a good offensive line in Philly with Frank Reich as calling plays for him. And now he's in that same situation again. The pass catchers aren't super talented, um, but, you know, they're solid. And I'm going to take, speaking of the pass catchers, I'm going to take one. You know what? I'm actually going to take Marlon Mack here because I've gone so wide receiver heavy. And I'm going to hope, I was going to say, I'm going to, I was going to take Paris Campbell, the wide receiver. But I'm going to actually lock up Marlon Mack here. Get Jonathan Taylor's handcuff. That way, if he does go down, I feel good about my depth there. And I'm going to see if I can get Paris Campbell to fall to me. And he did. Paris Campbell's a guy, I think he's a deep, deep sleeper that I really like with this. You know, he's a guy they're excited about. He's a guy who's really... Um, looked good as a rookie and has struggled with injuries and stuff. Has shown some flashes. You know, they had Phillip Rivers there last year, but bringing in Carson Wentz, if Carson Wentz bat, bounces back in a major way, you know, he's probably the third receiver in that team right now. He's going to have a role. 
I'm going to draft him there just for the upside. Um, a little bit odd taking two Indianapolis Colts there, but that's just the way the team panned out. I don't usually take my handcuffs, but in this situation where I let my running back situation loaded up on some receivers and got a stud like Melvin Gordon early, I don't mind having the handcuff to my running back one this late. And um, we're actually going to start Carson Wentz as well because all the quarterbacks I would like to, I would love to get Stafford or Burrow. But like I said, I'm comfortable taking Carson Wentz and rolling into next season and being perfectly fine with that. Gabriel Davis went. Gabriel Davis in the 13th round is an absolute stud. He's a guy I'll be snagging up everywhere I can. Did a video about him in the uh, Dynasty Wide Receiver Rebuild video about why I would be buying low on him if I was looking to rebuild. They cut John Brown. Um, and yeah, I think he has a chance to just be an absolute stud. Um, I'm going to snag Derek Carr here, actually. I think he's a solid, you know, startable running um, quarterback that I could throw in there if Wentz does struggle and he can get me, you know, 18 points a week, be at least solid. Um, hopefully they bring him some more weapons or, you know, do something there to make that team a little bit more exciting, though. But, yeah, I like getting him there. And I'll take a shot on A.J. Green in um, Arizona. I think he's got more in the tank than people know. I don't know if he'll get, you know, all the target volume that he wants there. Would have loved to see him go to a team like the Packers or somebody that needed a receiver a little bit more with a good quarterback. But way of the road. We're going to take him there, and that will conclude our draft. So we got Carson Wentz at quarterback, Jonathan Taylor at running back, Chris Carson at RB2, wide receiver one, we took Stefan Diggs, wide receiver two, Julio, wide receiver three, we've got Tyler Lockett, and then we've got Dallas Goddard holding down the tight end spot. we got Melvin Gordon as our first bench running back, Jarvis Landry, Jamison Crowder, Mike Williams as our first three wide receivers on our bench, and then we were able to snag Marlon Mack, Paris Campbell, Derek Carr, and AJ Green to round out the roster. If you've made it to this point in the video, please hit that like button in the video. Hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, put your comments down there and I'll respond to all comments. Until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out. This is Fancy Joe.